Welcome everybody. Welcome to Dear Wolfie number four. Dear Wolfie number three ended up being just about Joe Rogan and Eddie Bravo. I'm sure that will blow up or get controversial a bit. You might want to check that one out. Um, but uh, now let's continue on with some of the best grapplers and jiu-jitsu people I have trained with. Uh, Dear Wolfie number one was the best MMA fighters, the very best. I've trained with hundreds, but the very best I listed. You might want to check that out. And Dear Wolfie number two was the first t- uh, 21, I think. Uh, 20 or 21 top grapplers, jiu-jitsu people, Olympic judokas, wrestlers that I've trained with. And now let's get on with the rest of the list. I hope you guys appreciate it. Please thumbs up. Always uh, helps me out and subscribe and that kind of thing. Okay, so part three, we talked about Dear Wolfie number three about Joe Rogan and then got into some Eddie Bravo business. I forgot to mention a few things. Um... That was UFC 43 that Joe came over to me and said, Dan, Dan, relax. And he put his arm on me. So thank you for that, Joe. When the ex assaulted me for the second time that she assaulted me, I left her after the first time. Left the state, moved to another state, and then stupidly was going to meet up with her later. So yeah, women assault guys too, and uh, that shit sucks. Um, What else did I forget to mention? The time before UFC Atlanta when I kind of saw Joe, but I was in the stands, um, was UFC on Fox 4. I was walking backstage before the event, the like big circle. And he was talking to Buffer on the side. And he did go out of his way to stop talking to Buffer and shake my hand, guys, um, which is always nice. Uh, Bruce has always been very good to me. I talked to him at UFC Atlanta, by the way. Bruce has always been good to me from back in the day. Um, And... um, Joe, multiple times, people that are going to blow up just because he's so famous say, oh my God, how dare you talk about rolling with him or something. Well, that was back in the day, whatever people are people. And um, he has multiple times on the underground forum before I left 10th Planet, mind you, said it was a very nice guy, a very strong guy, said that it was very knowledgeable. Even when I made a thread and called him out. Uh, after the John Jones versus Gustafson fight, because the first time it bugged me in a pay-per-view, but that was the second pay-per-view in a row, we started calling linear oblique kicks to the knee, um, elliptical kicks. And then everyone dogged on me and dogged on me and dogged on me for pages, as all the asshats do. And then Joe got on there and said, no, Dan's very nice and, and very knowledgeable, and he knows what he's talking about. So back in the day, he gave me some props. Don't know where I stand with Joe now, but it is what it is. And... Uh, yeah, me and Eddie haven't bumped into each other. Um, so next up is uh, Fabiano Iha. All out of order, guys. Fabiano Iha, I was training with back in the day at, um, when I was on Team Punishment at the end of 2002. Um, and when I was at 10th Planet, I looked up my IMDb, so it looks like that was 2007 to 2010. I was saying 2009 earlier. That might have been when I got my purple. Maybe it took a couple years. I don't remember. Um, obviously, I've been training jiu-jitsu since January 97. I actually started December 96, but I say January 97. Um, anyway, I trained with Eha uh, for a few months that I was on Team Punishment. And I think even afterwards, so I was still living down in Huntington Beach, but I started driving the hour back and forth to train with Gorka Shvich and Gene the Bell. Um, after Uncle Gene came up and talked to me on the set of Bruce Almighty, and, uh, you know, just talked to me for a bunch and invited me to the gym and, and things like that. That was the old gym that was upstairs, like two gyms ago from where it is now. Um, Fabiano Iha was nine and five with six subs. Um, so these are just, some, I'm giving some props to some of the people that I learned my grappling under that if it was at least four, five, six months, that kind of thing. Um, next up, Fabricio Verdun, we talked about that and Dear Wolfie number one. And really, guys, I didn't say who were the, Best um, technique, technical wise of fighters, you'd probably have to go Fabricio Verdum, Kane, Machida, Lawler, back in number one if you want to rewatch that. Anyway, Verdum 23 and 8 with 11 subs. So when you have that many subs and KOs, I say, you know, if we're talking technical, you're pretty technical. Um, and as I've said in the other videos, I, I grappled with them, only grappled once back in 2000 when I was blue. Uh, I've done boxing sparring with him three or four times, and I've done MMA ground and pound training with him. I skate back to my feet and try to knee my head off. The full story is in an earlier video. Next up, uh, I don't know how to say his name. Homolo? 
Romulo, Homulo Baral, Barai, Homulo, 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 he's going to kick my ass. I traded with him for three months. He was an ADC and world champion. So um, I visited Alberto Crane's school and uh, Homulo was there. And I was so impressed by him and like training with him so much that I actually paid. I don't, I don't pay money anywhere. I'm cheap as F. Whatever, I paid and went to the, that school for the summer for three months. Um, not only did we train gi, no gi, a lot of no gi, but I would stay after and spar Muay Thai with him. So he was getting better at his Muay Thai game. He would laugh at me because sometimes he would, I'd see him telegraphing the overhand right. I hit him with the, the little hop, jump back side kick to the liver. Nailed him pretty good with that a few times. And... Um, He's the one who taught me how to do the lead Superman punch, which is one of my shifting neo striking. Oh, you hate the term? I don't care. Uh, neo striking, which became a whole four um, part in my system. And I've never really fully taught my system. Maybe someday if I get ahead of MMA coach somewhere again, I will fully teach my really advanced neo striking system that works on everybody. Um, Grappling, he was just amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Um, and Alberto Crane, very good too. And um, guys, if you're interested in how grappling goes with these guys I'm listing off, watch my 10 narrated grappling highlight videos I have as I traveled around the world. Okay, next up for wrestling, we got Amir Ali Akbari, a Greco-Roman world champion. I think a couple times. 10-1 uh, and one in MMA. When I was going with Amir at um, AKA Thailand, this dude was the first guy where like, yeah, I'm used to like big steroided guys. Okay, I've been around the sport a long time. Everyone's on steroids. Um, anyway, Amir was like, oh my God, strong. Usually I don't care. I, people are like, oh, you're rolling with someone small. I'm like, yeah, but they got speed and flexibility and I'm not using all my weight or power, dude. Like whatever. Usually I don't care about bigger guys because, you know, when I bounce, it's bigger guys, smaller guys, whatever. It doesn't matter. Usually it doesn't matter because if they're 10% stronger than you, 11, 12, 13% stronger than you, you can still make that up with breathing, relaxation, angles, technique, etc., sensitivity, spinal structure, etc. Um, but with Amir, it's like, whoa, not only are you that much better of a wrestler than me, but... <laughs> But uh, there is is some very few clips. So there are some clips of me going with Amir, his Iranian training partner, and uh, so other so is going late with me. I have a video versus three super hawks or giants versus three giants or something. Dan the Wolfman versus three giants. You'll see that there. Next up, Fabiano Scherner, 11 and 11 in MMA, six subs. I think he's a nine or 10, probably more, nine or 10 time world champion in jiu-jitsu at this time. Black Bolt under Bustamante. Um, Scherner's the man, and now, you know, coaches so many fighters. Um, what was Gracie Baja Portland and is now ATT Portland, I think they call it. I think it's uh, American Top Team Portland. Um, you know, he's got Ed Herman, who just won. Congrats, Ed. Chael Sonnen, who's now got his black belt under Fabiano. Congrats, Chael P. Even though there was a time in the, uh, the wild, wild Westland, Oregon that I don't know if you really had the biggest guns. These 18 and a half inchers that once doubled Sylvester Stallone gave you a run for your money until the sheriff said, I can't handle both of you in this town, so I left for everyone's safety. Biggest charms? Yeah, you probably got it, but whatever. Uh, next up, Dennis Holman. Guys, Dennis Holman's 53 and 20 with 40 submissions. 40 submissions in MMA, two of which were on Matt Hughes in just seconds. In just seconds, dudes. So, um, yeah. Last time I rolled with Holman, he was double knee riding, knee riding my face so bad just to show me. <laughs> just to show me. And he tapped me out with a top wrist lock, I think, twice. Now, when you're getting your black belt, you get tapped out with a top wrist lock. It's not a move you get tapped out with, right? Well, when you know how to guide someone into it with your physical pressure that there's no other escape routes and you're grinding neon belly, double knee right, neon face, neon throat, 
you got nowhere to go. Yeah, Dennis Holman's a pretty good grappler, guys. Um, also, like, lost uh, an ADCC to Henzo Gracie, but went to decision points time limit or something. I think back in 2000, right? So, um, okay, next up on the list, Chael P. Chael P. Sonnen, who I was once supposed to fight, unfortunately told mu muscles in my upper back, was going to join Team Quest after the fight. Then I went to MFS instead, in which case shortly thereafter I tore my left pack, so it was all related. No, I wasn't faking. I wish I would have fight. They announced me dropping out like a day before, I think, but really I told, I think I told them five weeks out. Still feel bad about it. Still wish I would have had that fight. I had better boxing than Chael did at the time, but he had way better wrestling, still does. So yeah, he probably would have decisioned me, but I would have had a chance, submission or striking wise, I think, before his hands got better. Um, but anyway, you know, Chael Sonnen, 30 and 17 with four subs. And, you know, submissions were his weakness early on, but he dedicated. And now he's a black belt. And you see his mount against Vander Lee Silva. He mounted him, I think, four times in the third round. His mount sucks. He heals in. And you can see my rolling video with Geese, the first time I rolled with him and we're in Geese, guys. Very popular video. Um... And I decided to risk it and go. I could have, I actually snapped him down and got side mount and could have tried to hold position to like say I dominated for a bar. But I went for that crazy Russian double knee bar. And oh well, it happened after I had already tried a 10 finger guillotine. And I went for it. Eventually, he mounts me and his mount. His mount just sucks. Chael Son, and when he gets mount, there is a lot of hit pressure. He heals in. It's, it's crazy. Next up is Mike Pierce. Mike Pierce is 17 and 7 with only one sub. So you go, how can this guy be one of the greatest grapplers? Well, I don't know why. He didn't really use his submission ability in his MMA fights. Just felt more comfortable, I guess, dominating position, grounding and pounding. But I rolled with Mike a lot. Like, I was the grappling coach for a few months at his old gym, Rose City Fight Club. So, um, not only did I teach Mike, but I would roll with him. And Mike... Submitted me a few times. Um, and, and some of it was drilling, arm bar escapes and stuff, um, to be to be honest. And some of it was drilling, but Mike was a very good grappler. And I see him flying back from Russia now with Ed Herman, so uh, Godspeed, you guys. Um, but, you know, he's a phenomenal wrestler. I got, I got some footage of mine in my narrated, I think, number six. My narrated uh, submission highlight. Rare submission highlight grappling videos, guys. You're going to want to check those out. Uh, next up, Marco Machado. There's a few different Marco Machados, but this Marco Machado is a guy that I first rolled with at AKA Thailand. And, and we hit it off, and he was um, he was great, and he had armbarred me a few times um, from Neon Belly, I think. And most guys from Neon Belly, you ain't getting me. Like, I'm really hard to submit from Side Mount Neon Belly. Um, but he could stay so low when he swung for the knee that when I'm baiting, I couldn't pull the elbow back in, um, came close once to getting with him from the ground, uh, spinner Rooney him in R8 roll, came close all of once. I don't think I ever got him. He even came to my classes when I was coaching in Malaysia, and he would come and learn from me in my MMA classes. In fact, as a second degree black, I think first or second, I think he's a second, was a second degree black belt. Even though I was a brown belt, he would give me props because I would teach him neat submissions like my side cradle, side gravity choke, um, some of my, my my leg locks, you know, reverse toehold or whatever. I don't know. I remember exactly what he liked. But, um, you know, he would give me props for not only liking that, but I was trying to teach him some basic striking and neo striking, the switch punch and the combinations that I talked about earlier. Um, so you see how things go around. Um that I talked about earlier learning. So um, he now, I still, I think he opened uh, Check Matt Dagestan. I think he's in Dagestan there. So he's probably got all these killer Sambo wrestler dudes with beards that are athlete Ubers and uh, teaching them Jiu Jitsu. Next up, Juan Conero, um, American top team Atlanta. The dude is tough. 21 and 13 in MMA with nine stubs. Old school. Won three fights in one night at the Battlegrounds. Remember the Battlegrounds when the ropes weren't tight? The last real one night, eight, fu eight fights, three fights in one night, eight-man tournament we, we've had. Um, I think Invicta's done four, four women. 
Maybe they've done an A1. Yeah, but there were only one round piece kind of thing. But Battlegrounds was like legit, and he won Battlegrounds against like Brock Larson, I think. And he's probably most, most known for his rear naked in UFC um, against uh, Mark Munoz. Um, and besides him, a American Top Team Atlanta, there's the uh, um, Ardia brothers. The Ardia brothers are EDC vets and world champions in jiu-jitsu. And at least the bigger one was a wrestling champion. Um, and those dudes are awesome. And while the bigger one, like almost my size, he can do things without using strength that are just sick. They're very intelligent, very smart guys. Both are lawyers. And um, I'm sure some of the jiu-jitsu community know who they are. Next up, Shinya Aoki. Aoki I rolled with when visiting uh, Evolve MMA. Really liked it there. He seems let me come out to Evolve for a couple days. Um, I didn't feel comfortable asking anyone if I could video. I rolled with Shinya Aoki and about seven Brazilian black belts and a couple of their other fighters um, as well. And then sparred them the next day. Um, when rolling with Shinya, uh, it was just one round. I started on my back because I was so much bigger. He was cutting weight to go to 145 for the first time. Um... But I wanted to show him like I knew some stuff. I put him in the magic armless toehold and he um, just kind of looked at me like this is interesting. <laughs> and he stayed really low and stretched himself out. Just like we talked about in earlier video number two about the backbreaker when Donaher tried to show Henzo Gracie the backbreaking. He said, squeeze me like you love me, motherfucker. Henzo so funny. That's a funny video. Um... Just staying low and sprawling out. Now, could I use power to tap him? Yeah, but being over 200 and doing the dude who's got a fight in a month, cutting to 45. So I just put really slow, gradual pressure. And then when he got, he couldn't pass and then couldn't get out. And then towards the end of the round, um, I decided to open up, see what I can do. He passed a little bit and then the, uh, the round ended. Um, but he, he gave me a nice opening for some of my videos. And guys, by the way, yes, he won... With my better version of the Exorcist, Exorcist Neck Crank that I originally filmed in 2009. Look up Exorcist Neck Crank. I filmed that video with Ryan Bow, who was on this list number three. Ryan Bow, who had been in Japan for 10 years. Ryan Bow, who's a Facebook and a friend of Shinya Aoki. And I th he saw it on Ryan's Facebook page. I do believe that is how he learned the twisting the neck that he did at Dream 17. And then later Evolve Fighters did. He saw, he saw something, did it twice in one fighting championships, one fighting it became. He's done that exorcist neck crank twice. We've seen some Brock Larson, some guy do it recently twice in the um, World Series of Fighting rebranded. Uh, um, and then um, we've seen Frankie Edgar do it, etc. and so forth. So um, look at my six subs from back chore you don't know, which also had the one that everybody missed, grabbing your own elbow that Damian Maya did to Ben Askren. Right before the tap, he tried to grab his own elbow. Uh, Askren kind of pulled it off. He slid it down to the butterfly grip. That's not the typical one-handed choke. It's a different to get more power. It went here for the booty twist, chubby checker choke, I call it. So Damian Maya was trying the chubby checker choke. And... Slid it down into this butterfly grip pull in. Everyone missed that. Why don't you watch my video on the six subs from back control? Nobody knows. Okay, I digress yet again because that's what I do. So, next up, Solo Ribeiro. Only two and one in uh, MMA. I trained with him and Zanji for a year. Um, he lost to Kondo badly. Beat him through the ropes, bloody, bloody in 22 seconds. No disrespect, but that's what happened. Blood hit the camera. Everyone in the world turned down fighting Yuki Kondo, except Dan the Wolfman. That's how I got to fight Yuki Kondo. Um, he is, then he fought one more time, beat Jason Ireland, another guy who I trained with, who, who was pretty good as well. I used to go to the, that gym, which was the first time I ever sparred a man. I went to that same kickboxing gym when I was like 17. And got hit by punches really hard for the first time. Outside of street fights. Okay, so um, Solo Barrel, five-time world champion. Solo, training with Solo is amazing. And Zanji, next on the list, 2-0 and in MMA. KO and a TKO. Um, fighting in Sengoku. 
Um, I really enjoyed training with the Ribeiro brothers and uh, used to spar them both MMA, light gloves, small gloves, and big gloves a lot. Sanji, I was tearing up with jabs and low kicks and just technique and stuff. Um, and then, boom, he stepped to the side. He hit me with an overhand right hand, cracked the living crap out of me. I'm like, Aah! and he, he, gave, he hugged me. Thank you, Sanji. I was like, thank you, brother, for not knocking me out. He literally, he, he literally hugged me instead of knocking me out. And he used to make fun of me when I went to buffets and stuff afterwards. But whatever. Next up, Vicky Mega Anus or Vinny Magales. Magales, 19 and 12, 15 subs, World Nogi and ADC champion. Only trained with Vinny for two weeks. Years ago at Team Quest West, I spent two weeks um, training at. Um, but but Vinny was a stud. And when you're that technical and bigger and stronger, 230 pounds, just yoked at like, Nine percent body fat or seven percent body fat or something, um, and you're ridiculously flexible. Whoa, that's like a really hard dude to beat. Obviously, next up, uh, I forgot about Hidetaki Monma. Monma was one of the best guys I rolled with in Japan. Eighteen eleven with eleven subs. Monma, I subbed at his gym, Monma Brightness Gym. I kind of messed up and subbed him in front of his students in about twenty seconds. First time he went, went from Butterfly Guard, got on my guard, and then boom, I give I carnied him. And the whole room was like, <gasps> and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't mean to disrespect this guy in his whole dojo. Anyway, I really like training with him, and he tapped me out at least four, probably five times with arm triangle chokes, even though he's smaller than me after that. His arm triangle chokes and setups. Absolutely amazing. And he fought a lot of bigger guys. Looking at his record, he fought some big name guys if you check out his record guide. And then Kichi Kunimoto, I think I only rolled two rounds with him. One time he showed up at Wajitsu Kick It. I think he lives in way far away yeah, in Japan, not in Tokyo. 20 and 8, 10 subs, 3 and 2 in UFC, 2 and 0 in Ryzen, and lost his last fight in Bellator. Um, but, but he swept me, I think, twice. I have video footage of that. Uh, I'm not hard to sweep, and he swept me, I think, twice. Um, didn't tap me, like Momo tapped me, like. Like I said, like five times or so, something. I'm um, rolling with him many times for a few months. Um, but Kunimoto did manage to sweep me. Um, also, guys, all the black bolts I'm currently rolling with, like two weekends ago, I rolled with like five, six black bolts. One a famous name, fought in the UFC once. Um, one guy has just won world championships yet again the week earlier in Europe. So great guys that I'm training with now. I just really don't want to say what training. The guy who's school that is very good, and he can sweep me as well if I'm not minding my P's and Q's. And if I'm not just stalling them out, he can submit me sometimes too. So yeah, I used to be a better grappler a few years ago before like my health really went downhill and I could only train a few times a month. But um, guys, some really serious grapplers. Thank you very much, guys. Please thumbs up, please share, please subscribe. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the on inside. This was number four. Please check the rest out and I will catch you on the flip side. Boop.